Brooke Goldstein is a human rights attorney and an award-winning documentary filmmaker. She's an author and has focused her research, among other issues, the recruitment of child suicide bombers. Brooke, thank you so much for joining me here. What is your reaction to the effort by Israeli's governing party to overhaul the Supreme Court? Well, I think the issue is actually quite simple. The Supreme Court in Israel is completely unaccountable to parliament, and that's just simply undemocratic. So where in the United States we have checks and balances, we have three co-equal branches of the government. In Israel, the Supreme Court, which is just 15 judges, can strike down any law, any law that's enacted lawfully by a majority of lawfully elected members of parliament, they can strike down any law if they view that law to be unreasonable. Now, the issue is that what is reasonable or unreasonable, according to 15 justices, is not an objective standard. And everyone from all different sides of the political aisle have agreed. You have Gideon Saar, who is an opposition party member, Yair Lapid, and also Aharon Barak, who are all opposition uh, to the Netanyahu government, have all come out in their career and said that Israel needs to have a reform of this so-called reasonableness standard, because again, it's simply undemocratic. Yeah, and Brooke, we just heard how concerned the Biden administration is about this action. It created a rift between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So how serious is this or could this be? I think the issue boils down to the mistaken belief, unfortunately, uh, from the Biden administration that the reforms will tilt power in the favor of of the conservative government that they see as the other, much like they would see the Trump or the Republicans as the other. But political power in a democracy is not a binary. And the reforms that are being enacted will benefit whatever party is in power. And also the great thing about a democracy is that if you don't like the law, then the citizens can vote in place another government to get rid of the law. And I think it's completely unfair uh, to say that Netanyahu, who again is ruling uh, based on democratic elections, is doing anything to hamper the relationship with the United States, which is a great ally of Israel. Um, and Israel is a great ally of the United States because there are mutual security concerns. Uh, both are Western countries that have the same values, which are democratic values. And we have to be very careful when a U.S. administration, on the one hand, is complaining about foreign interference, whether it's Russian or Chinese or, or otherwise, in our elections, to turn around and so blatantly try to interfere in the electoral processes and the democratic processes of another democracy. All right. Great point. Well, opposition members of parliament have gone so far as to call this effort a legislative coup. Listen to how this world history professor at Henry University described it. Uh, the question is, what limits the power of the government? Uh, democracy is based on checks and balances. But in Israel, there is just a single check on the power of the government, and that is the Supreme Court. If the government, for instance, wants to take away voting rights from Arab citizens, which is something the coalition members are talking about, the only thing that can stop it is the Supreme Court. So this is not just a judicial overhaul. This is an attempt by the Israeli government to gain unlimited power, and they are saying so openly. So, Brooke, is he right? And why are we seeing this effort happen anyway? It's funny when you see um, Israeli professors or so-called experts in the law try to dictate what is checks and balances. I think he has a total misconception of the definition of checks and balances. Checks and balances is when you have, like in the United States, three co-equal branches of government. When you give 15 people the power to override a law that has been enacted 
by democratically elected members of parliament in a total lawful way. And there was no way to override the Supreme Court override. That's not checks and balances. In the United States, for example, Congress can override a Supreme Court vote. They can pass new legislation. They can do so by constitutional amendment. You simply cannot do that in Israel. You have the tyranny of 15 people in the Supreme Court. And again, the standard is totally subjective. It would be one thing if the Supreme Court would be striking down laws based on a, a constitution. Israel does not have a constitution. That's not what they're doing. So there have been calls, again, from left and right since the beginning of the establishment of the state of Israel and both from uh, Likud members, non-Likud opposition members, everyone agrees there has to be reform. The issue now has become so politicized that those who only five, six years ago, like Gideon Sar, like Yair Lapid, like Aharon Barak, who were calling for reform to the Supreme Court, are now changing their mind because they're doing so for political purposes. All right, Brooke Goldstein, great information. Brooke Goldstein, the human rights attorney, author and filmmaker. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. We appreciate it.